Hello everyone. In this video, I will explain you what do you mean by Cypher based message authentication code that is CMAC. In the previous video, we have learned about the concept of message authentication code that is MAC as well as nested MAC. So here we are ensuring the integrity and authenticity of the message. So how we are ensuring the integrity and authenticity of the message? So whenever sender and receiver, they are sending and receiving the data, they can make sure the message will be coming from the legitimate parties that is called as a authenticity. And during the transit, the message will not be modified that is called as a integrity. So these two terms will be ensured by this message authentication code as well as our nested MAC. But in case of a nested MAC, the more security is not provided due to the short steps we have followed here. But here in case of a cipher based message authentication code, we are using the concept of cipher block chaining mode that is CBC mode of operation. So what is the idea behind using this CBC mode here? That is, we have to create a one block of MAC from the end bit of plain text using a symmetric key cipher n times. So, we are doing this step n times number of times as per the n will be defined. So, that's why this is more secure as compared to our nested MAC. In case of a nested MAC, we are generating this MAC with the help of these two steps. The first of all, message will be appended with our key and our MAC will be generated. Now, in the second step, we are taking this whole data as an intermediate digest and we are again taking this message plus our message authentication code. Here, we are using the concept of key. So, this key will be appended in our nested MAC code. So we are taking the key and our MAC will be there. And in the next step, we are taking this whole data. And again, we are taking the key here. And we are taking our previous message authentication code. Then we will get our final message authentication code. But in case of a CMAC, what we are doing? We are taking here the concept of encryption algorithm. And this encryption algorithm, we are applying it on a message and with the help of this key that is shared between all the users, that is sender and the receiver. The same key will be used in that process. Now, what will happen? First of all, we are taking the value of the key as well as our message, that is M1 block. If suppose our message consists of data that is A, B, C, D, E, then we are dividing this message into different terms that is called as a B bit. And all these B bits that we are considering it as a M1, then M2, this is our M3, this is our M4 and M5. So here the value of N will be 5. So total 5 blocks will be there and each and every block we are applying this share key that is our symmetric key and after using the encryption algorithm, our output will be generated. In the first step, we are not using the XOR operation, but in the second step, what we are doing? What is the final output that is received from the first step that will be XOR with our second bit of data? So that is our second bit of data. So first of all, we are taking A here and the value of our key. So that will be applied on our encryption algorithm. So whatever the output will be generated, that will be XOR with the second bit of data and our second bit is B. So that is the procedure will be happening here. So here again, whatever the output will be generated after performing the XOR operation, that will be encrypted and that encrypted data will be given to the next step. So here what we are doing, 
we are performing XOR operation plus we are performing the encryption algorithm. Then this is the two way steps we are performing on your message bit. And after getting the output, this process will be continued till the last bit. Now this data will be going to the C bit. Again, XOR will be performed. And after that, we are again performing the encryption with the help of this same key value. So now you can see here, whenever you are going with that D bit, again you are taking the output of this encryption. Again, we are performing the XOR with our D bit as well as our encrypted data. Then again, we will get the output that we are going with that encryption. And this output, we are again XOR with our next bit of data that is our E bit. So all this message block will be XOR and XOR with our previously generated encrypted data. And that will be happen till we got the last bit of our data. So you can check here after completing these steps, all these steps, we will get our final value. So now here, after using this encryption algorithm, we will get our select n leftmost bit. And that is our n bit CMAC value. And that we got from our all the fine previous steps. So here you can check in this diagram. We have taken this key here. Then we have taken this message here. In the first step, we are not applying the XOR operation. But in the second step onwards, we are applying the XOR operation with the previous bit of output that is taken from the encryption algorithm. And then the same process will be repeated till our last bit of our data that is our message. And at the final stage, we will get our end bit of CMAC value that is Cypher Message Authentication Code. So here we are using the concept of Cypher Block Chaining mode that is CBC mode. So each and every block will be appended that is XOR with the previous bit that is called as a cipher block chaining mode. So here these are the steps we have followed in our diagram. So the first of all the message will be divided it into n blocks and each of the m bit block will be taken here and then the size of the CMAC will be n bit. So the last block is not the M bit, then it will be padded with the one bit followed by enough zeros bit to make the M bit. So the first block of the message will be encrypted with the symmetric key and to create a new M bit of block of encrypted data. Then this block will be XOR with the next block and the result will be encrypted to create a new M bit of, M -bit of block. And this process will be continued till the last block will be received. So we have followed these steps till our bit E that you can check here. Now, in the next one, that N leftmost bit will be taken from the last block and that is called as our CMAC value. So the addition, this is the symmetric key will be taken that is K and this CMAC uses the another key that is K which is applied on the last step. So now this key and this key is not same. We are applying the different keys on the last block and we are applying the same key on the whole encryption process till that step. But whenever we are appending this key here, this key will be different and this key will be 
different. So these both the keys will be values will be different. So you can check here. We are using that two keys. This key will be same that is applied in the all encryption step. But in the last step, we are following this different key. Whenever we are doing XOR operation with the last block of our data. Now, how the key will be generated in the CMAC? So, this key will be derived from the encryption algorithm and which is a with the help of plain text of m0 bits using the cipher key value. And the result will be multiplied with that x. If no padding will be there, then we will be multiplied with the x square. So, this is our encryption algorithm. And these are the multiple bits are there that we are padding with the 0 bit. And this is our key. And we are taking here the data that will be multiplied with the x value. And if it is a no padding, then we are multiplying with the x square value. And that data will be generated that is called as a key value. Suppose our message is there. That is A, B, C, D, E. And we are doing a padding of 0 bits for appending on that particular message to keep the message in the required format. And whenever we are doing the padding bits, that time we are multiplying it by x with the help of this encryption algorithm. And if no padding will be there, then we are multiplying with the x square. So the first of all, we are taking the value of key here. Then encryption will be applied. We are taking this message here with the message and the key. The encrypted data will be generated and that will be produced to the multiplier operation. This multiplier will be done with the help of x or x square depending on the padding bit. If padding is present, then we are multiplying with the x bit. If padding is not present, if we have not done the padding operation, then we are multiplying with the x square. And then our final key will be generated. So this key will be generated in the last step of the process. So we have seen here, there are two keys will be there. This is the key that is shared between all the senders and the receiver. And this key we have taken here, that is the steps given in that diagram. So how this key will be generated in the last bit that we have taken to append the data in the XOR operation. So these are the steps we are following for generating the key in the CMAT operation. So in the cipher block chaining mode, we are following the steps like we are doing the appending operation with the previous block of output data. The same steps we are following in that CMAC algorithm that is cipher message authentication code. So here you have to remember by using this CMAC sender and receiver can ensure that integrity and authenticity of the data and this is more complex than message authentication 